it's good to be on the uh, webinar here with you again. And I see a lot of um, same names, but uh, some new names as well. Uh, this, uh, yeah, I, I decided I wanted to do a couple of these, maybe once a week, if everybody's interested. Just I like being in the game and sharing ideas. Um, so this is kind of like the first of this season for me to do a webinar and I wanted to talk about some of the things that I look at as a trader and uh, Photon Trader uh, this, it, which is the software that was designed by myself and my partners were traders um, and uh, I'm sure this summer has been really slow for everybody because I gotta tell you it was uh, very quiet a sleeper all summer when we had this huge coil that just we couldn't get out of in seven to ten handle ranges which when we have volatility sometimes we get that in the first ten minutes of the day so not a whole lot to do in the summer but there's a lot going on now and it's good volatility I think is great of course with liquidity for me I like li uh, volatility I think that is what gives us opportunity a little bit about myself I'm just gonna go through some things uh, very quickly here I started 39 years ago going on 40 which makes me 60 pretty soon I've done everything you can imagine except for mop the floors of the exchange I, I worked down there starting uh, in 77 in two years I, I bought my first seat had seats for 25 years three different exchanges I ran companies I uh, had a charting service for my own company for 15 years just about I actually left the floor in 2000 to start Photon Trader and start designing our electronic trading platform. Future Path is a company that I own, which is a brokerage firm that also owns, or I mean, that also owns Photon Trader, but offers over 25 other platforms. A little background on, on myself, I see some new faces. Everybody sees these risk disclosures. Um, it's important just to always remind everybody that futures trading is it has substantial risk just because of the margins and um, the volatility sometimes of course with that with risk is you can have great potential but you definitely don't want to trade with any money that you know you don't feel like you can lose because uh, for a couple reasons you know you don't want to risk all your assets when you're trading but at the same time um, you, you can't trade if you're trading on borrowed money or uh, your last time you can't trade with a clean mind and and have focus uh, emotion comes into it and a discipline you know when those things are in the way uh, you can compromise those um, so I decided to do this live it has these webinars after the close and I appreciate you guys uh, who are on here live because uh, because you get to see things unfold a little bit I got my feet to the fire by, you know, maybe calling out some directions and moves and showing you indicators, but it's more fun to see actual movement. Um, I just have a couple slides, but I'm not, this time I'm, I'm just going to go through Photon Live and show some of my stuff and we'll look at the markets and pretty much see how I frame it out. At the very end, we'll do a little quick question and answer. I'm definitely not going to be boring you guys. Uh, we're going to do a 45 minute maybe and um, and then a 15 minute maybe something like a question and answer um, I tend to ramble a little bit as my wife would remind me so I'm gonna keep it short and I don't want anybody sleeping on the job while I'm talking so let's go to the next thing um, uh, it, here's just a snapshot of photon before we get into the live uh, photon trader we're, we're gonna focus on that because that's some uh, a platform I own and I've designed and what I use when when I trade so you know it's got all the features that I want um, we'll talk about it and things that you probably should have you know which by the way there's so many platforms out there and I, I think there's some great ones that we offer as well and everybody has something different and everybody has uh, really great features and they it could do some platforms can do some things different than others uh, but this is of course a bias because I designed this one well let's let's go live right now for for starters here uh, all right so here's a here's a live this is photon trader just have a handful of things up there on the screen so we could take a quick view of it and then I'll go through we'll look at, at some charts some setups you know um, 
For those who have Photon Trader, I know I've been asked to go over some, some uh, of the functionality. So we'll get into that. Due to the time, I want to have a little of everything and, you know, and kind of just touch on the important subjects of Photon Trader and, and uh, the highlights. Okay, so what you're seeing here is uh, a quote board that I put together. Um, our quote board, you can take, you can uh, pretty much customize it to what you want. If you don't want to see something, you just uncheck it. Uh, you can slip and slide these real easy. Love, you know, and I like that feature because everybody has a different preference. Um, so what I, I just designed is so you could kind of see this um, two ways. You can have your instruments displayed in a vertical uh, manner like this, which if you're trying to save real estate and you want to look at all the markets all the time, you might want to do something like this and have it displayed vertically. So so you can see them at one time. Uh, actually, it's the other way around. If you want to save room, then, you know, what you can do is I made it tabs on the top. So you could just tab to the actual <clears throat> product that you want to look at. You see, what, you see how that works? Okay. Um, Meanwhile, on the left side, this is what we call our ladder or dome. We actually call it the matrix. Well, you know, every front end kind of has something very similar. Um, ours is pretty state of the art. Um, there's a million different little things you can do with it. You can, it's easy to uh, move around. It's not just some kind of Excel thing put together, and it's it's written in dot net. If you click on this here, you could change uh, rows, height, fonts, like this. Everybody has a different idea what how they want to view it. You want to see it bold. You know, if your eyesight's, you don't wear glasses, but you want it bold, and you're, you, know, you can see it from far away or whatever. And, you know, I for my for me, I need I need to see it bold, so we'll leave it like that. Uh, you can set different colors. If you had different matrices, you know, who knows, maybe you don't like blue, you don't like the color we chose, or you're going to have three of them you can design, and each one can have a different color. Um, I think anything you can do that is makes it easier to uh, recognize, you know, the markets or, you know, make decisions quick and you know, visually, uh, you should do. In the middle here, if you right-click, here's the different things you can look at. I have traded volume, which I'm going to go show you something with traded volume, so you could pull up historical volume on the side. But because uh, I know some people, you know, don't know that, for, you know, or I mean, some traders might not know that they have photon. But we're going to go some uh, and do that in a little bit. But over here we have things like bid accumulated volume, or you could do ask accumulated volume, and this is really for um, we we do have some customers that would sweep the book so if you want to know if you want to sell 5,000 contracts you could see you'd have to go down to this level and click here with 5,000 lot just heads up um, I'm sure we're not talking to anybody right now that's doing that but just in case that's just kind of nice it's also informative in night markets to see you know uh, sometimes the market depth you just adds up and you, you get a feeling of 10 deep, you know, where it was last night versus, you know, the, uh, the night before. Uh, bid orders, this is something that we have um, that I don't know anybody else that has it. It's interesting, but um, this shows how many orders it takes to that make up this particular um, offer, right? So does it matter right now when it's moving in the ES? I'd say no. Uh, do you want to look at it maybe, I don't know, in the night markets or in a thin, mar you know, uh, let's say a uh, thin market where usually you see five and ten contracts. All of a sudden you see a 200 lot. If you see the 200 lot is, you know, is the combination of three orders, you know that there's one big order probably in there. And, you know, you could, you know, that's how you could kind of decide if that was just somebody trying to push the market or spoof it or or is that order for real? Um, I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but it's uh, um, something that, you know, is more and more uh, 
watch scalpers in, in the night market. So the, these are the different things you can add. If you don't like traded volume, you could take it off. You could go here and put it in. Um, on the toolbar, I'm just going to do this real quick because I actually wanted to have this set and I didn't, but I'm going to show you. If you go to the uh, <clears throat> if you go to the trade matrix and scroll, these are all the different things you could do. I'm not going to cover them all, but you can change things in the trade matrix. But if you go down here, uh, you could change the uh, auto recenter um, to five second. It always auto recenters um, and no more than 60. But um, you might want that. But you see where it says request historic historical trade volume. You click this. If you hit OK, now what happens if I close this and I open up a matrix again, right? And let me connect this here. So you'll see this fill up. It's going to start pulling the historic volume for the day. Now, why is that important for those traders who happen to like market profile or volume profiles? So it's a nice feature. Um, you could you could tell where the high volume areas are here. We trade 57,000 contracts at this price, and the low volume areas, the little tails up here, and the very high of the day, we only traded 210 contracts. Um, so low and high volume um, areas usually attract and detract. Um, I'm not going to do a market profile class, but for sure. Uh, it makes a lot of sense just in general if you look at this um, and you look at a chart you'll see a lot of coiling around those levels or you know um, you'll see tails at real low levels um, let's see over here uh, if, I'm not going to get into every single thing but on the very top here if I right click here you can add the time to it and you can add your position uh, currently, I did a scalp to test this one by one and traded a couple other markets uh, earlier. You'll see. If you're not in the market, you're, you're going to see this zero uh, on our ladder. If you look at the position report, this is what, what I did today. And uh, it's still short one. Um, you see. That shows your total position report. But when you're trading, you really need to focus on what you're trading. So what we did is we put the position report on the matrix of whatever you're trading. We have a left and right click button, left for uh, left click for whatever volume, uh, quantity you want, and a right click quantity. Uh, purposely because I tend to like, uh, let's say if you buy 10, you get out of 5. So maybe you have a 5 and 10. Or if you're just a, a one and two guy, you have uh, you get in on two and you get out of one, and um, it's a nice feature. Uh, for instance, uh, if I go out and I click right click, that's a two lot. I left click, it's a one lot. Slip and slide it, just grab it. Oops, yeah, hold on to it and grab it. Right click cancels it. Um, for for myself, coming from the floor, uh, you know, I felt like as a trader, the things that I need is simplicity so I can react quickly. Um, some of these front ends, um, I'm not going to get into them, they are just too clunky. Uh, you know, ours, you could just, you know, left, left click. If you, if you do it too fast, you know, I have it set on. If, if we put it in faster than a half, half a second, it asks me, are you sure you didn't? You wanted to put in that second contract. And actually, that was something I wanted because if I drink too much coffee, I tend to, you know, click real quick. And, um, for instance, like if I click real quick, there's a second quick uh, click. It asks me this, right? And I said, yes, okay, I want to put it in. Um, we all have a little nervous twitch every once in a while. On Photon, you can execute in 20 milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds is one-tenth of a tenth of a second. Just put things in perspective. So, um, all right. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going through this real quick, and then let's look at some markets. Um, am I doing all right? Let me start out by um, let's just look at the markets for a little bit here. I'm going to just minimize all this. I've been asked to 
talk about you know how I look at different markets. Um, this is a uh, photon charts that we have. Most of the indicators that we feel people like. Um, we have some cool ones that you know, I think some other front ends are, don't have our charting uh, platforms. And then of course we don't have every bell and whistle because. Um, uh, the, if you have too many things on, on the charts, it, it could slow it on your computer and it adds a little bit of a, it makes it a little bit crazy. So um, anyway, uh, it, it could slow it on your computer. And it, most of the studies that you see these days, here's our, you know, some of our studies that we have, right, um, are useless. Just, just a lot of, you know, in fact, they're almost... Um, uh, you know, they don't even work half of them. They're just, uh, you know, uh, a pro, you know, a whole slew of products of uh, makeshift uh, indicators. So, you know, sure, we're adding some more, but um, and we take requests, and if they make sense, we put them on there. So with Photon, the, what I, I do like to do, if you see this little blue, you know, arrow that's pointing up in green one, if I click on this, You'll see on the side you could trade off the charts if you want. Um, so if you trade it off the charts, and let's say we put a limit there, now we're working to sell one at 139.75. We slip and slide it. There you go. And we cancel it. Stop. Just click. It's blue because it's a buy stop. It's intuitive. It's above the market. Put it below. It just it just uh, rejected it because yeah, it you know. Um, it was a bad order, but if you put it below here, it's going to be red. Um, let's go and let me show you a couple. Yeah, let's load something here. I, earlier I had the ZBs up, so let's talk about the ZBs. I made a trade this be a little slower only because we're on um, a webinar here with GoToMeeting. It kind of really takes up uh, some space and everything. Um, earlier this morning, I I put a sell out here, and I'll explain why, and then I covered it. And I actually covered it too late because I was not paying attention. I was having coffee, <laughs> but still worked out fine. You could see the short here this morning on a 30-minute. I cover here. I covered. I sold two, bought one here, bought one here. Sold two, bought one here, and bought one here. Uh, this is the five-minute. This is the 30. I like to look at a 5 and a 30, um, and this isn't everything that I do. It's just, you know, 45 minutes. I can't go over every single indicator and, and set up, but if you get something out of this, great. Hopefully you will. Um, I kind of look at a 30-minute as my longer, term, uh, longer time frame to look at. I, I like trading off a 5-minute, 30-minute for direction as the, the overall daily direction. And um, I, I, it's good to look at a daily and weekly just to get the, you know, you have to decide at that point when you walk in, is the market bullish or bearish, right? And the dailies, I looked at the ES today, for instance, and we were kind of inside and it looked like it could, you know, you can have a two-sided day trade and we'll look at that. Anyway, but looking at the, uh, this trade here, um, I'm going to see if I have, uh, hang on a second, let me see something here. Oh, let's see, there we go. So I just marked that up a little bit. Here's this, in fact, this is before I bought it back. But you can see, um, uh, if you look at this cell, these little dots here, this is a uh, little indicator that I programmed, I call it PAV reversal. And uh, everybody has a reversal, and God bless them. Everybody has their own idea what they think is a good reversal. I don't like one bar reversals. That's too soon. You go beyond three, you're probably going to miss the mo you know the move. I do a three bar reversal, and I do it in a particular way, which I'll show you later. But you can see we had this buy trend all the way up here, right? We had a nice extension. Well, after a nice extension, um, if this if this would have took out this high, and we had a higher high 
down below on you know momentum high high then I would say we're going higher but we actually uh, he had no momentum coming back to retest this um, and we got our first PAV cell here so on the second retest right up there um, right in that area is where I felt like it was worth a sell above that high and then once the market I got short and we made that high I put the stop above this spike um, more than often spike highs and you know most highs you can you could pretty much count on if you have a fail retest with low volume or no momentum uh, then you might have a reversal that's your first clue um, there's there are other things that I not showing on here necessarily uh, but if you were to draw a trend line here we broke that trend line okay so what do you have you get your first sell and at that point you know um, you want to trail it after once we broke this and you want to trail your stop uh, uh, right above the most recent high once the market breaks another you know like a coil or a flag that would be my reason for staying short and as long as we have this nice acceleration with you know no reversals we didn't even have a reversal here that's why you didn't see any buy um, that was a nice sell this is a 30 minute so you can see on the 30 minute I got in before the 30 minute gave a sell and the reason for that is you, you could get a little bit of a uh, the edge you can have a little bit of an edge before the market really turns on a 30 minute this would be a longer term sell you know probably you know a lot more risk but you know if you're looking to trade uh, overnight and, and you, you want to trade a longer term a 30 minute would pro probably be good uh, but yeah, I find like a, you know if you're trading on a 30 minute you might be taking a, taking markets overnight and, and I like to sleep at night and I don't like having uh, positions when I'm sleeping so uh, uh, for the simple fact is I don't sleep I get up in the middle of the night and check them um, but for those people that love to trade 24 hours uh, possibly my wife <laughs> uh, you know that's a good thing so I, I do like trading five minutes I think there's plenty of moves on a five minute chart um, for, for that reason um, if you pick three or four good five minute trades and you make anywhere from Ten, you know, five, six ticks to uh, 15, 20 ticks, uh, you can make a real nice living, even if you're wrong half the time. Um, well, actually, let me go into this real quick. Uh, here's, and I don't even, I got to pull up the ES again. This was probably at 12 o'clock, but um, th this was interesting. We had, you know, a nice push down here, big volume. A retest the spike with no co confirmation is staying up there in the e-minis and then we got our reversal here once we broke this shelf here and you break the vol you know this down volume again then you, you see the acceleration volume what you're looking at it here is a five minute chart with volume candles uh, volume candles are something our volume candles are a little bit different uh, we have an algorithm in there that as the volume grows the candle gets wider so you can uh, visually see the market um, uh, picking up volume in the direction of a breakout uh, having volume on the very bottom it, it's really it's really hard to tell and uh, uh, you know I believe if you, you know visually the more you can see visually and not take your eyes off the charts to different other you know other areas or uh, other indicators um, the better so so here we had volume pick up when we broke this shelf here and then the market came down you get a little bull you know interesting we get a little bear flag right and wait for a resell you don't want to be buying this reversal because these can be short-lived but you might want to take your profit if you're short from up here and then you can always get short again if you're as long as you're not taking out this previous swing high if you're looking for a bigger move you just keep on you stay with it until finally if you got it back above this area uh, you know or at this high let's say yeah, maybe you're out but um, I would say at this point 
without even looking at the charts, I'll have to look, but this is a pretty good climax. You know, the market really had big volume here with a spike down here at that, that level here. So you probably want to take your profit once you have a volume climax, okay? All right, so let's go back to Photon here. So this was the climax. Now here's, this is what's interesting. What you're looking at is a regular candle, okay? It's not so informative, right? Uh, because you don't see the volume. You know, you're not sure, you know, is this really a true breakout or is this a fake out, right? You know, um, but if I go up to studies, I'm sorry, not studies, to style, and I hit candle volume, now all of a sudden you see a whole different picture. Um, you see that? Remember, you know, the, the markets, you know, uh, you know, the markets are simpler than we make them sometimes. Uh, we tend to uh, really uh, try to overcomplicate it and have a million indicators. Now, I can throw a million up there for sure, and there's a lot I like, but I like to keep it very simple. Um, and so for, for the sake of 45 minutes, we're going to look at a handful of things, but simple is good sometimes, you know. Um, here we have a nice trend going. You can see that, um, but you can see that we have a higher high here, and we have a lower high uh, on the 310 oscillator. The 310 oscillator is an oscillator that Linda created that we have built into ours, just like the PAV, which I created, and the candle volume. I would say there's a good chance uh, for the sake of getting in. I just sold one right here. We're probably breaking this trend. You've got your, you got two uh, reversal dots here, um, and y y this was actually a failure. If you look at, you know, we made a high here, came up, and we tried to go higher as momentum died out. Now, there's always a good chance that we're going to try to retest this bottom. So we shorted at this level. You can see that short. Um, let's put our, st our stop in put a stop in and let's just for, for right now we're going to put it right here at 38.75 and I'm going to bring up a matrix boom okay so it shows we're short one right here um, this is our P&L yellow is our average price this is where we sold it and our stops right up here um, so we will keep an eye on this particular trade. Meanwhile, let's bring up the market depth. And we're getting into the last half an hour, which is also, you know, a whole other system that, you know, or trade that I like to, to look at. Um, I like watching the imbalances. Although today I don't think you're going to have much of anything. We've been circling around. We've been on both sides of the market. Um, so, you know, it could go either way. So you just follow your indicator. I, I'm not you know, expecting a huge imbalance either way. I feel like we could, you know, at least try to test down a little bit based on what I'm looking at. So, uh, and for, you know, for the sake of showing you, you know, what I would do is you've got that trend that you broke, spike high, lower momentum, and you got this PAV cell. So for starters, there we're going. Uh, this shows we're, we're up or down. Pretty much didn't take any heat um, so far, anyway. And we'll be moving the stop, and we'll trail the stop a little lower. This here, I want to talk about the market depth that we have. Um, this gives you a little bit. On the last half an hour, you could see uh, the size on the bid and the offer, who's who's uh, who's hitting the bids, who's hitting the offers, how many contracts. Um, so let's look at this. I filtered this to 20 contracts, so I'm only going to see 20 contracts and above. This is really what's trading. You can see if it traded on the blue, that means it traded on the bid. If it trades on the red, it's trading on the offer. Um, that's going to start to pick up more and more as the day uh, goes on, or I should say the last half an hour. Um, so we'll keep an eye on the market here. Um, for the most part, the bottom of the, the the top of this candle probably will have some support because uh, uh, there's a thing called pockets that I 
you know, I always talk about. And these V-shaped bottoms usually are pretty strong and, you know, more than often they're going to hold on the first test down when you have such a big climax bottom like this. So let's put in a limit right there. And let's just bring it up a little bit. You know, my personal, you know, personal way of doing this would to do, do an OCO, which if I want to, we can actually just do one right now. I'll put one on the chart. I click OCO, and I put it right here. So there's my, my buy, and my stop's right there. I'm going to lower it just a little lower now. Uh, above the second bar and do a two bar look back and these two now are going to talk to each other one cancels the other that's what an OCO is so if this gets filled that one will get canceled if my stop gets filled then this will get canceled so now I can relax and watch the market I'm not going to worry about like oh I got to get out and I think OCLs are really nice because um, Occasionally, you have these crazy markets that they just uh, you know really move, and uh, you know you don't want to miss something because you know, I don't know maybe you got up and got a cup of coffee, you went to the washroom. Uh, you should at least always have your stop in. Uh, it's more important to have your stop than your profit, just because you know you're already in the market, and you want to make sure that uh, you're protecting your uh, your losses, right? Um, you'll lose more sleep if you have the market go way against you and you didn't have a stop in than if you just missed your target. There's a lot more danger in it. But in this case, we have an OCO, so it doesn't really matter. And I'll just put this up, and you'll see on the matrix, it shows up on the matrix as well. Now, on the matrix, I can slip and slide it, or I can slip and slide it here. It doesn't matter. It all depends on what you want to trade on. I tend to trade on the matrix um, and just, you know, my charts here. And, and once it's in, um, it's nice to look and look at the highs. And you might go, hmm, put this in at 38, but maybe I should put it right above this high. See that? So, um so for me, uh, this is, you know, what I would be doing in, in this particular case. Uh, quick review, you had a nice extension. We stopped below this pocket up here. We had um, lower highs in momentum as we made a spike high. And we chances are we're going to return down here to test this level. This is what we're up. This is our average price that we're short from. Uh, and the time, we don't have to watch the time, but we're short one, and it's it's pretty intuitive, you know, uh, transparent. Pretty quiet, though. I, I have to say the markets aren't really uh, doing a whole lot. This was a small, you know, slow march up, you know, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, although <laughs> we had an eight-handle rally in uh two hours and we didn't even have an eight handled range in the summertime on some days so I shouldn't say uh, say anything that uh, we're, we're pretty lucky we got anything going on uh, so so let's look at that for a minute um, and let me go here for a second let's see I, I also did a trade earlier in in the uh, EC and let's take a look at that and let me bring up uh, some volume candles for a minute and this congestion here I kept seeing retesting of this level at lower highs so I felt like when it broke this this area you know uh, right in here that I would look to get short. And when we failed on this retest, I shorted it right here. A little premature, but my, my point was this lower high and 
we kept respecting the pockets all the way down. And then all of a sudden, when we did break this shelf, you could see the climax in volume. Uh, so once you have a big climax in volume like that, this bar here is really important. You know, if we did, if we started trading volume above this big climax bar, you'd probably have a reversal. Um, I believe I'm still short one. I covered one here, uh, just in the spirit of uh, I wasn't watching the market too closely, and I'm just keeping an eye on the market towards the end of the day. So, and let's just see. Um, let me bring up. Uh, A matrix and let's take a quick look at the E is it up there okay market view there we go and that's the currency so I'm still short one um, short at this level here um, I just felt that the market you know um, cannot really get a lift so um, unless they see a substantial amount of volume and breaking out a previous high, um, not this, this was not substantial volume above here, uh, it, it's, you know, uh, to me, still a short. So um, that is the, that's that market. And we'll go back to our... Uh, E minis now. One thing I do like to do uh, for those who have Photon, I'm sure you know this, but if you don't, um, you can set up, like I said, tabs. That will save a lot of space, right? Or you can do it vertically, like this. If you want to, never, you don't want to change, um, for instance, uh, the tabs and switch on the tabs. Now, if you have four monitors, I, you know, I have eight. I really don't care. I, I leave it like this. I still, though, um, like having one or two uh, matrices up, and I don't like having more than that, and I, and I will explain why. <clears throat> In this case, this matrix here, I have linked. If you see over here, you can link this over here with different modules. So now, if I'm going to look at a market, I just click on the market I'm going to look at. And the reason for that is, you know, any kind of ladder, matrix, dome, those things take a lot of um, CPU usage. So you really want to limit how many of those you have up. I get this all the time, and I go, oh, you know, your, your system is slow, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I go on there, and I look, and they have uh, an old computer, and they have six of them up there. <laughs> and they're surfing the internet, and they have some other charting package all on one computer. Well, I got news for you. You know, that's not going to work. Um, the amount of redrawing that happens on these things, it's like redrawing a picture all the time, repainting it, and it's a lot of CPU usage. There's hundreds of thousands of messages that you don't see here. You're looking at this. You think, you know, you're seeing some volume changing. They're changing in the milliseconds um, in one direction. I did a time and sales and a fast market and e-minis, and we had over 200 uh, trades in one minute, which means four trades per second in one direction, uh, going in one direction. It was like like 300. It was it's crazy. So you can imagine if you're off by a second, you just missed like five or six trades, um, and that's because the amount of messages you know can really slow down your computer. Let alone. A lot of platforms are slow anyway. Um, our servers are at the exchange, but not, you know I'm not going to slam anybody. But there's a lot of front ends out there that their servers are in Texas, Florida, Kansas, whatever. Um, you already have slowness before you even log on, so you need to keep your computer uh, free of any uh, latencies and things like that. Um, boy, this is a slow trade, but let's go back to. Uh, the e-minis here since we're watching them and here's our little trade wake me up when it's over um, <laughs> so I, I, I like to look at many things I like looking at moving averages now uh, a, a little thing about moving averages 
uh, I use them um, and I use them in certain ways. Moving averages can be great with volatility. They can be your worst enemy um, with no volatility. So you could have a really high return with crosses and all these breakouts and moving averages and all that kind of stuff with volatility and liquidity uh, together. But when it's really slow, that's when you get the false signals and they don't really uh, aid you in any way. So you, you need, to, if you can cut out those slow days when you're looking at moving averages and not pay as much attention to them, uh, you'll do really well. Um, okay, so let me see if I got, uh, I'm going to open up a chart here. Boy, time is just flying, I swear to God. I'm terrible at these webinars. I don't know how to conserve time. So here's my moving averages that I use. Um, everybody has different moving averages. I have a 30 high and a 30 low close. And what that means is this is 30 high, uh, the averages of the last 30 highs, the average of the last 30 lows. You can also change the slope so that if it's green and it's pointing up, if it's red, it's pointing down. Now, um, technically, uh, I don't really have a sell yet unless we close below here on the 30 low moving average. Now, this is a breakout system. Uh, and when, like I was saying before, when the market's trading sideways and, you know, you don't have the uh, direction of the market, you can get chopped up. So that's why I didn't bring it up today. Today was not a, it was a coil in the morning, and then we finally started to move around. So going back to here, this gives you a different picture, and so it, it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking at a, a moving average breakout, um, today's probably not the day to be doing, you know, move it, moving average breakouts uh, in E-minis. Um, uh, in fact, I think we're probably almost unchanged for the day, somewhere around there. Uh, that's not a great thing. Um, if you look at the matrix, what's really interesting, when we shorted it, this was the highest volume of the day. It just so happened, 61,000 at that price. So um, this is going to be a little bit of a resistance, you know, playing around here, which if you look at market profile, the highest volume, highest, most traded area is called the point of control. And, uh, you know, go, coming up to it, it can be a little resistance, just to keep it in simple forms. But um, it, pretty much a day like today would be where the sh short-term traders have control of the market. And you can see this is kind of a bell shape here. Uh, so the market's trading around the point of control. Maybe we'll get a, go a little lower here. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of love in the market here. Um, you still would be short. You still have your sell signal. So we can bring this down. And we'll just risk a little bit. Worst scenario, you, you lose three ticks and you start the next day and look to make money on the next day in this trade. But remember, there's other markets to look at, and I believe the uh, bonds had a nice move. I felt the currencies had a nice move. Um, this had, it was decent, but you had to play it um, um, like I was showing you before. Um, you know, when the market was started, it's downturn, you just kind of ride it. Um, now we're at the end of the day, so anything can happen at this point. Uh, we're still almost unchanged. So, now, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think if I have, I, I mean, what I like to do actually at this point, because I'm already past my 45 minutes, is take some questions. Um, hopefully, I showed you something and we could look at markets. Um, one thing I do want to say is I've gotten so overwhelming, good response about these types of things that I love talking about them. Um, and I like looking at markets. It just, uh, it's probably the highlight of my day. I'd rather do that and look at trading and uh, being creative and, and have camaraderie with other traders. So I might do another one next week. Um, at the end of the day, I'll see if you raise your hand if you're interested in something like that. That's great. Oh, 
Okay, so we have uh, some questions here. Let's see. Our OCLs due. Um, yeah, that's a good question. One of our uh, clients actually wanted to know if our OCLs reside at the exchange. Um, what you're looking at on this OCL, yes, this stop is sitting at the exchange in this limit, but we have to manage it. Why the exchange does not um, support OCLs? What most people don't understand and is that, especially just the CME, uh, they only support market orders, limits, and stops. So therefore, what happens is, um, I believe maybe Ninja Trader, a lot of these front ends, they, they have synthetic stops. So what that means is instead of this stop being at the exchange, which it should be, that's the safest place for you to have it, and it's also matched up against offers that might have been there, sitting there for a while, so you get a good fill. A synthetic stop just means when this price trades, then this goes in as a market order. Well, if the market's flying, you might get filled way up here. So uh, we like to put our stops in at the exchange so that uh, you, you can get the best fill and also that it's safe. What if your computer blows up on you or something like that? Um, you're sitting at the exchange. At least you have those in there, right? The limit is always at the exchange and uh, our stops always at the exchange, but OCLs are always synthetic, the management of them. Either completely synthetic, which ours aren't, we like to keep them, uh, our orders at the exchange, um, but you, you will see for sure, um, uh, you know, slippage if you don't have your orders at the exchange. All right, let's see what other questions we've got. Uh, Chris is asking, Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. So they wanted to know if these errors, uh, these errors are where I got in. Yeah, this is where I sold it when I came on with you, which is this price. This was just a test. I, I just did a buy and sell real quick to see if uh, I was connected properly. Um, this wasn't even a trade. And on Photon, for those Photon traders, if you right click, you have the option of showing your executed orders or not. Um, I left it up there to show when we got in so you could see it. Um, it's a nice feature to see your orders, but it's, trust me, if you're trading on a one minute and you're scalping, turn it off because, uh, it, you know, you're going to get in and out on a one minute or two minute. You're going to have arrows on top of arrows. It's not, it's, it, you know, you're scalping. But if you're looking in this case, uh, we've been in the market now, which looks like 20 minutes almost. Um, you know, it's nice to see where you bought it and where you sold it. Or, for instance, when I uh, did the bonds, uh, you know, if we look at the bonds here, and I'll bring up the bond chart, you can see I sold it here, and then I, I bought it here and bought it here. Now, normally I would be buying it right above here. This was the first buy, which I was probably in a, the boys' room, which that's why I say it's good to have a, you know, keep an eye on it. No, okay, I didn't mean to do that. Here, hang on a second. Let's just do this. So this is right there is where I should have been covering my stop. I should be, you know, uh, knowing that, you know, my stop, this would trigger a buy. And I, I, I'll also probably have to show you how the PAV reversal works but and one other while I'm doing this if you look here and I bet you most of you don't even know that there's so many things on this if you click on this little tab up here this will allow you to put in um, levels and prices so that's kind of nice because you can make your levels this way and then you can see the prices so you and you can cancel them they're just levels. All right, so we're getting close to the end of the market close. I would be out by um, 3 o'clock on the close because if we don't get filled, I would just take our profits if we have it or take our loss either way. 
Um, what other question do we have here? Did I answer your question? I think I did. Okay. Yeah, you did. You did. Um, can you put multiple COs in a bracket and pour this together? Yes. Um, can you put multiple orders in brackets together? Paul's reading off the questions, so I don't have to look. Let's first create an OCO uh, real quick, because I don't see one on here. Uh, let's name it OCO, and let's call it five or five. So for, for five ticks, and let's put this as an OCO, and let's save this. Now we just created our own. OCO. You can have multiple OCOs, but let's just, I clicked here, I got this OCO down here, I'm activating it, and and I could go here, put another one in. So now we have multiple OCOs, and, and I could cancel one, cancel the other, okay? And uh, so, and we can have multiple brackets as well, and that could be a whole other, um, you know, uh, you know, maybe a lesson, you know, or webinar. What else here? Let's see. Oh, it says you should have one of these webinars once a month. I'm going to actually do, uh, you know, I might do one next week, you know, but if I see like everybody, uh, I don't have that many logged on, then maybe I'll do once a month. But I don't mind doing them. Uh, you know, I just tend to talk too much probably. Yeah, this is the standard. Um, you know, is this recorded? Oh, okay. Somebody said, is this recorded? Uh, this is recorded. Hopefully it recorded right. So I can send it, you know, uh, send them back to you. Yes, we did. And, um, that's what I wanted. Oh, question. oh, uh, oh this, this is interesting. Okay. So this little area here, this, did somebody want to know what this is? Um, our programmer actually, uh, you know, he's a little bit of a geek, like, myself when it comes to trading, but uh, he made this observation through some studying that the market seems to go where the quantity is, where the volume is um, on, you know, the bid and offer. So right here, if you add this up, we have more bid and offers on this side than we do here. Uh, well, no, now it's offers. So if it's pointing up here, chances are the market might go higher. So it's just a little bit of an idea, you know, that you know, in, in this case, we have more bids, I mean, more offers than bids, so you see it's pushing up. Quite honestly, I don't watch it. Um, some guys like it, and if you want to hide it, you can just click on it, and you can hide it. Um, so I have another question I just noticed. Um, can you, do you have different default quantities for different markets? And that's a great question, you know, because... I actually came up with that feature when I realized when I went from trading the E-minis to the bonds, my quantity, default quantity was much bigger in the bonds and all of a sudden I'm going and I'm seeing my P&L swinging by five to $6,000 up and down. I go, what the hell did I do? And it's because I still had 20 on the E-minis and, and I switched to bonds and I had 20 in the bonds, which I only traded, I trade 10 bonds versus 20. At the time, that's what was going on. Well, let's keep an eye on the market for a second. Let's see if we get filled. We're almost close to the close, so let's bring up the time. We've got three minutes to close. I'm going to be out by 3 o'clock, or I'm going to get filled before then. So if we get filled, that one lot, uh, then it, we should be canceling. There we go. We just got filled, and our stop got canceled, right? Before the close. Um, so now if we look over here, and I bring up our you know, our little um, position report. If you want to see what we made in the E-minis, you can look here. We made $112 in a one lot, nine ticks, you know. Boring, but it worked, you know. Um, at least, you know, I, I was able to show you live how that works. Um, now, if I go to, to an E-mini chart, let's just look at the E-mini chart. You can see we sold it here, and we bought it there. Well, let's keep an eye on it. Remember, I put my buy right around here because chances are we're going to retest down here. But, you know, this is this was big volume coming out of this Climax bar. So um, who knows? We could test all the way down down there. But, you know, if somebody gives you, a, 
you know, piece of candy and you're going to take it. It was a, you know, pretty easy scalp for the most part. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back to that original question. If you go to this little wrench here, we have a feature that I don't know if anybody has this exact feature. We have a left quantity and a right quantity, but even better than that, if you go to my instruments and I go over here, I can say, let's say here, let's find the E minis. I'm going to make my left quantity a two lot now and my right quantity a four lot. Now I'm going to save this instrument and I say OK and I'm going to close out of this. When I open up, when I go open this up again, right, now the new default quantity will be in there and if I bring up the E minis, there's my two lot, there's my four lot, okay? So it's really important that, you know, I think to be able to have that if you trade multiple um, uh, commodities, right? If you're trading gold, are you going to trade, uh, you know, let's say you trade five E-minis, you're going to trade five gold? Probably not. You probably trade two. Or, or sir, you know, you know, think about um, a silver. Silver is, you know, another product that you're not going to, you know, uh, do the same as, right? Uh, silvers, you know, you're not going to do five silver if you do five gold. You probably do two silver. <laughs> you know? So that's what that was created for. Um, all right, I'm not going to beat the dead horse on that one. Anything else here? Let's see. Uh, oh, uh, okay. So we have a question about demos for those that don't have Photon Trader. Um, I think we're going to send out a link for a uh, simulator just so that you don't have to bother running around in, you know, uh, for everybody who attended. And if you have one, don't worry about it, you know, just for those that don't have one. And you can, you have 30 days to try it out. And I think you get only 30 days a year uh, from the CME for simulators, like for at least Photon, you know, for each front end. Um, so we'll send that out and probably send out a recording too um, if it came out pretty good. Yeah, right. Let's see. So let's see. Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay. Um, somebody just asked if we have market profile. It's funny you ask because we, we actually are in the process any day now of having market profile that you can uh, opt to have with Photon Trader. And uh, and yes, I know I'm a big market profile guy and I do look at it and Window Trader is my favorite program. Uh, Terry Lieberman is my buddy for years and I love his product. Um, yeah, I did design monkey bars, uh, you know, uh, that market profile, but, but Terry Lieberman's market profile is, you know, much more uh, intense and, and effective, and I think we're going to do something with Terry on that. So hopefully uh, you can see that pr pretty soon, and I will do a market profile. Somebody asked what I do on my market profiles webinar. Yeah, that would just be for fun. I, I would do that. Um, you know, it's uh, because I like market profile. Right, let's see, and I'll take one more question. Let's see. Oh, um, you want to see a bracket order. Okay, well, I can show you a bracket order real quick. Uh, there's different types of contingency orders, and um, so what I'll do is, let's do this. Let's bring up uh, a matrix. Okay. And let me bring up uh, a market view. All right. And let's tie these two together. All right, so no, I wanted to show you the. Uh, I'm still short here. I was thinking about covering it, but anyway. Let's see, is the market closed? No, the market's still open. All right, let's go in here. This is how you would set up a contingency order. What contingency orders are basically is 
they're they're almost like a little system to t you know that uh, is based on market conditions and, and and I think we just had a little outage here. I lost uh, the internet for a minute. Are you guys still there? Hello. Are we still connected? Yeah. Okay, so we just got a blip in the internet. Hopefully you're still there. Um, anyway, uh, so let's, uh, oh, I know there was one other question that I meant to answer, and I actually do have an answer for that. So <laughs> let me, uh, somebody was asking, I, I actually forgot I did this for you guys, the PAV uh, reversal, what that was. Um, this is just an example on a daily chart. These little green dots that you remember that you saw, and red dots. Um, you got if you take it from here, from a zero. Let's take it from a zero uh, level. Um, this this particular uh, bar was higher than the last two, and the low was higher than either one of these. Okay, so therefore that would get a plus one, so it gets a green dot. This one, same thing, higher than these two, gets a plus one. This one's higher than these two, gets a plus one. These two, gets a plus one. This one is not higher than either one of these, either or, and, but not lower, so it's, let's call it a rest. You guys see that? And then finally this one initiates the next move up. This one takes out the a high of either one of these, and it wasn't lower than either one of these, so it gets a plus one, and so on. Now, you could do this manually if you don't have the system. It is kind of a pain in the butt to do it manually. That's why I programmed it into Photon for selfish reasons, but everybody else can use it. And if you find you like it, if you don't have Photon, this would be uh, how you figure it out. And... Um, you can see in this particular case, this was way back, I just happened to have this example of a 23-day move to the upside in the S&Ps, and then you finally got your first sell here, and that's when you needed to get out or reverse, but that was a big, huge move. Um, so that, you know, that is what the uh, this looks like. Now, uh, as far as trading it, like buy and sell signals, I wouldn't suggest just trading it, but if you were, here's an example where market was in a sell and then in a buy and a sell and a buy and a sell and a buy. So um, it can be very, very helpful. Um, I know uh, there's various people out there that have different, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, uh, reversals and some of them are one two three bars you know all right so let's see um, here's some of the information uh, this is my uh, email and my phone number in fact it might be clearer right here if you have any questions uh, feel free to email me um, this is my my tanning booth and uh, you know, that's my phone number. Whoops. Oh, that's all right. I just lost it for a second. What's it? Oh, okay, wait. Is there more questions? Oh. Boy, there's a lot of questions. Huh? Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Because um, we're way over. You know, why don't you guys just, you know, email, email me with any questions you have. I, I noticed that... Um, you know, uh, there's a lot more questions while I was babbling on like an idiot. Uh, but, you know, let's just uh, talk, give me a call, uh, email me, and I might do this next week. If you're interested, um, would you guys be interested in me looking at the markets again? Uh, it's up to you. Yes? A lot of play on that one, David. All right, well, that's good. <laughs> I hope you got something. Um, you know, I'm definitely going to be doing this. Uh, I've been asked to do a, like a, you know, actually call out signals, you know, every day, uh, my last half an hour, hour, that's something I'm considering, but, uh, 
but this is just will be a free one um, for fun. We'll look at markets and maybe I'll do a little bit more, uh, you know, of a spread of markets to look at like oil and, uh, you know, gold and, and silver or whatever, corn. Um, I like to look at them so we can share those thoughts. And I like doing them live, so probably we'll be around 2 o'clock to 3. All right. Um, let me know. Give me a buzz if you, you need any uh, information or you have any questions. All right. Take care. Have a good day.